Judas. Your friend from Galilee has caused quite a stir. One cannot deny that he has followers, especially amongst the less well-educated element. But you, Judas... What do you want with him? Just to talk. Judas, you are his friend. Bring him here, discreetly. And what's in it for me? And welcome back to the special edition of Hannity. We turn things back over to our studio audience as we continue with Mark Burnett and Roma Downey. Kirsten, when you th that scene was particularly powerful. As I was watching that, I don't want people to take this the wrong way. I, of all the apostles, he's the guy that is the one that will betray Jesus. And I'm thinking, wow. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. But the oh. thing is that God knew beforehand that that was a part of the plan. And Jesus knew. He knew. And he, that's why he kissed Judas on the cheek. And he said he knew that he was going to betray him. But that was part of the plan that had to happen for his sacrificial atonement on the cross to happen and his resurrection. But what I love about this film, and I thank you so much for making it, is especially for my generation, for younger people that are growing up around so much cynicism and so much doubt about religion always reminds and Christianity. us that I'm old. Go ahead. No, no but I think it's, it's a very uh, important perspective because it's one of the most um, non-churched, uh, you know, cynical generations, for them to see this and see that he was the son of God, but he was also the son of man, and that he, is, he was human, he was like us, and it causes them to ask those questions, to investigate, and I think, Roma, you said in an interview that it caused a reporter no God who wasn't a believer to really investigate who Jesus was and it raises those questions the most fundamental important questions and that's why I'm so thankful for this one film. thing I would add to that is it's not preaching you're not proselytizing you're telling the story and if people are impacted by it they're impacted by it mm -hmm. and right Carol hi I, I believe that this film has the uh, potential to really reach the secular as well as the Christian audience mm -hmm. and that for Christians it tells us about uh, it reminds us that Jesus, as he was leaving the earth, he said that greater works than these will we do. And I believe in America sometimes and in parts of the world, we act as if we are powerless. And we're not supposed to be powerless. One of us is supposed to be able to put 10,000 to flight, and we've lost sight of that. Yeah. And then the last thing I want to say is, Sean, uh, we're waiting for you in Tennessee. <laughs> I got kicked out of New York in case you didn't hear. Uh, uh, Todd Starnes. Well, I'm not a pastor or a theologian, so this is sort of the view from the pew. And, and I just want to say thank you. Uh, we live in a society now where Christians are being told to, to hide their faith and to keep it quiet, that we don't have a place in the market uh, place, in the public square. And yet you've come along and have created a beautiful masterpiece uh, that moms and dads can finally go to the movie theaters and take their, take their children to see a film that is, in fact, family-friendly and, in fact, has a message that I think everyone here can agree with is in fact life-changing so thank you so much Tony Perkins good to see you how are you I'm good Sean now I've only seen clips of it so far but I have read the best-selling book that it's based on <laughs> and I have no doubt it's going to do just as well as the miniseries and the reason is Sean as you pointed out earlier human nature really hasn't changed people are still looking for true hope and true hope is found in Jesus Christ so I, I add my voice to those thanking you for bringing this out of Hollywood, there still is yeah. hope for Hollywood. Now, Stephen Mansfield has a great story. You have followed the faith of presidents. You also wrote Killing Jesus, the author of that, but the faith of George W. Bush and, and other prominent leaders. Uh, so I'm interested from that perspective to the movie, what do you think? You know, because I like history and like writing about history, I was intrigued by the earthiness of the story. You know, we've all seen the movies that are kind of ghosty. You know, Jesus sort of floats above very clean streets and everybody's all pristine. But I like the fact that they show the grit as much as they can without getting a triple X rating, not for sex, but for the, the, the violence and so on. And I like the fact especially that there's a lot of race 
on the screen. You see more diverse races, more uh, different ethnicities. And this was this is very much in the gospel. It's, very, it's why Jesus cleared the temple, for example, because you know, he was defending a certain segment of society against people who were racially biased against them. So the historian in me likes the fact that they brought that to the fore and captured that on the screen because the whole idea of an incarnation is that the Son of God entered into a time and a period and the muck and the mire and these you know, difficult physical bodies to, to represent God to the world. And so I'm, I'm really proud of them for getting that on the screen. I think the thing that really stands out, just to go on Stephen's point, is all of humanity is just failed and that he recognized that and that that was the purpose of his being and going through the sacrifice is that every you know all sin fallen short sort of thing you see that today you see it in the movie as well we, we were that, really um, conscious to show the flaws of everybody yeah. in the movie except for the only perfect character is Jesus every, all the disciples had flaws the Romans the temple authorities and so you could really identify and also young people have said to us they really felt what it was like to be with the disciples. Such a scary time. I also had the opportunity to step into playing the role of Mary, the mother of Jesus. You did a great job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But you know, while we know she was the mother of the Son of God, she was also the mother of a son. And you know, the, I have loved Jesus my whole life. And I've never fully considered what it must have been like to be his mother, to stand at the foot of the cross and to see her son be so mm -hmm. brutally Only murdered. three people there. Only three. All the rest of them ran away. They were scared, you know. But Jesus only said seven things from the cross. And yet one of those things, in the midst of all that, he took time to love his mother, which I think says so much about him. Yeah. yeah. All right. And coming up, closing thoughts on this blockbuster new movie, Son of God, coming up right after the break.